welcome to the second installment of the engineering update for the recreation of the Wheelwind Fighter. This section will focus on the pilot's seat. While it may seem strange to construct a seat before an airframe, there is a very pragmatic reason to do so. The Whirlwind Workshop is in reality a very well equipped engineering machine shop and as such has fairly limited storage capacity. So it is very important for us to schedule the machine tool time and budget so as to produce complete sub-assemblies so we can better store and display them as the build progresses. The pilot's seat was fairly typical of the seats found in British combat aircraft in World War II. However, it differed in detailed design so as to allow access down the inside of the rear fuselage to service and repressurize the retractable tailwheel are not uncommon and greatly disliked by ground crews due to the accessibility and very tight confines of the fuselage. The previous drawings and these images coupled with the spare schedule are really the only known information on the pilot's seat. A great deal of reverse engineering has been conducted to be able to manufacture as close as possible a whirlwind seat that matches the known form and function of the original. Our understanding of the original seat was that it was of a composite aluminium construction utilising large pressings, welding and riveting in its manufacture. Once again, economies of scale prevent the Whirlwind project from commissioning large press tooling for the seat pan. This has restricted us to utilising just riveting and welding. It has also required some additional components to provide the necessary connections and strength for the seat pan and sides. The video shows one of the side plates being profiled on the workshop's large open gantry CNC machine. This machine was specifically built for the project to be able to produce the very large single piece components that make up much of the Whirlwind's monocoque structure. Image one shows the layout of the main pan components. Side plate bearing supports, the main torque tube bearing brackets and the parallel motion support struts. Image two shows the basic construction of the bucket type seat, which accommodates the pilot's parachute also utilised as the lower seat cushion. The recess in the bottom of the pan was required to house the ripcord handle. Image three shows the riveted connection of the seat pan, seat pan sides and the seat side plates that form the load bearing connection for the bearing plates. Also seen is the heavy wired edges to give the seat the required strength. Image four shows the side bearing plates with the lower lift tube and bearings. The bearing plates also provide the hinge and locking arrangements for the folding seat back. The holes to the rear provide the location for the parallel motion struts. Image five shows the dog bone parallel motion struts 
and the patterns for the seat height adjusting lever castings. Image 6 shows a basic layout of the torque tube brackets, the adjusting handle levers and the height setting and locking quadrants. Image 7 shows the upper folding seat frame and the locking stops. The two rearward facing brackets on the frame are for the mounting of the rear armour plate. Image 8 shows the seat frame in its locked upright position, fitted with the top armour plate for the pilot protection, that also doubled up as the seat backing. The anti chafing harness plate and front harness anchor brackets are also now fitted. The seat height adjusting levers are cast from a high strength alloy LM25, which is one of the aluminium copper heat treatable alloys used in the manufacture of high strength aircraft components. Workshop to produce our own castings up to around 10 kilograms in weight. We also have the ability to solution heat treat them to a full TF condition. Image 9 shows the split patterns for the levers being prepared in the moulding boxes ready for casting. I will leave the process of pattern making and moulding box preparation for a later update. The video shows the actual casting process. The temperature of the furnace is 805 degrees C. Molten aluminium has a high capacity for absorbing hydrogen from the atmosphere. Hydrogen inclusion is very detrimental to the castings resulting in porosity which greatly affects the strength and quality. The melt, therefore, must be degassed. For small volume melts, this is best undertaken by the use of submerging a solid nitrogen compound in the melt. This results in an exothermic reaction which combines the hydrogen and nitrogen, producing copious amounts of ammonia gas, as seen in the video. Hence the reason for casting outside of the workshop. Even though we only use new ingots for our castings to guarantee strength and quality, the smelting process produces a quantity of oxides known as dross. This also must be removed prior to the pouring so as not to contaminate and render the casting as unusable.
image 10 shows the two lever castings after several hours of the solution heat treatment process and ready for machining. The following three images give a snapshot of the machining process to produce the latching mechanism for the seat handle and quadrants. In many ways, it's a very similar mechanism to how a motor car handbrake functions. The video shows the general arrangement of the height adjustment mechanism and how the latching pole locates in the quadrant plates shows a completed mechanism in operation. The last two images show the seat now complete with its leather upholstery. When on display at the Battle of Britain Museum, it is envisaged that the general public will be granted access to sit in the aircraft. For this reason alone, a lower seat cushion has also been produced. Thanks for watching and look out for update 3 which will focus on the cockpit construction. Please visit our Facebook and web pages and take a look at our Active Partners site at Kent Battle of Britain Museum. The project is a not-for-profit organisation solely run by volunteers. If you would like to assist the whirlwind project by making a small donation please visit our gofundme page thanks for watching